After previously establishing the effectiveness of a rear wing on a hatchback is through its interaction with the body, particularly the floor. This is true even with a rough floor. So how effective would a floor modification be with this modest rear wing? Firstly I need to re-establish the baseline as the radiator was modified and now matches the correct flow characteristics. This meant increasing the volume of air to radiator surface to twice of what it was. There was a small change to the airflow characteristics, increasing the front lift because, of course, but it also increased the performance of the rear wing. Pretty much the opposite to what I expected, it is likely that there is less separation from the adverse pressure gradient over the bonnet's front lip. Some of the increase in front lift would come from the increased wing performance, but this would need the wing to give about 15 newtons of lift at the front. However, the difference caused by the wing is just a couple of newtons. The wing's improvement ranged from 5 to 10 percent. It's significant enough to be able to dig into this difference. A couple of ways to understand why there is a difference. First, here's an animation of the coefficient of pressure plot along the span of the wing starting from the middle. Two animations side by side shows that there's a general lower pressure gradient over the profile for the previous wing. This leading edge is the easiest to see. Another way to visualize it is through the turbulence intensity function, referring to the non-dimensional turbulence kinetic energy value k given as a percentage of turbulence in the air. K is a calculation that is derived from the RAND's value of average velocity. Put another way, it is the velocity root mean squared. Different to the kinetic energy of the flow, insofar it is a measure of the velocity, not including the mass. It wouldn't be wrong to think of it as the kinetic energy of the flow, but it is explicit in saying that the flow isn't laminar in all the length scales. There are implicit flow structures underlying the laminar appearance. Through experimental observation, the turbulence intensity is characterized with certain flow conditions. Due to the lack of infinite computing power, we model K. Here, this simulation, K will be modeled all the way to the wall. More accurate simulations needed for model prediction will use the physics of the Navier-Stokes equation much closer to the wall. That doesn't mean that K hasn't been calculated, it's just that its value is small enough that the modeling assumptions isn't significantly impacting the simulation, even in outlying cases. Anyway, the point is, I thought I could be able to measure the map of the turbulence with the intensity value such that I could visualize the impact of the radiator change on the rear wing. Side by side with a value range 0 to 20%, yet yeah. nah. Narrowing the value range 6 to 12 percent on the frame before the wing, just. There is a little more high value bright color with the previous car model, which if seen without knowing the pressure values on the wing, you could consider there is a reduction in performance from the upstream components. Now I have re-established the baseline, I'll continue with what I was intending to do, floor modifications. The simplest change to the floor is to smooth it. A panel was added over the rear section where the spare tire well is. A couple of percentage of drag reduction is seen, with 30% more downforce, mostly at the rear. The CLA is now a relevant negative 0.2. Such a change is pretty much as expected. The air isn't colliding with the low, sharp rear body, freely interacting with the wing-influenced wake. This side view of the flow contours with the vector glyphs shows that the recirculation is stretched when the floor is modified. Reversed vector glyphs illustrate the negative interaction of the body. Mapping the flow of the wake from left to right illustrates the main flow structures and how the air is moving through the majority of this region. One thing to note here is how the air from the main rotation caused by the wing, flap 
and body combination is drawing air from more than a metre behind the hatch. There's been a few comments about how people don't like their rear window of their cars becoming dirty. This is probably the best illustration as to why it occurs. All the dirt is mostly pulled up from the tyres rotating into the super low pressure volume as the tyre leaves the contact patch. This low pressure draws air in resulting in shear stresses on the ground and therefore picks up dirt in the airflow. Here is an exaggerated example. The dirt is mechanically attached to the tyre surface, but the shear stress of the wheel rotating. As the dirt has momentum from the air drawn into the wheel wake, it continues by the surface of the tyre, higher into the air. The centrifugal force will detach the particles from the boundary layer, which are now properly airborne, ready to be picked up by the car's wake and deposited onto the rear window. Back to the boring bits of the downforce. The low rear body makes it difficult to add a diffuser, unless some of the metal is cut away. Adding an extension to the floor with a kick is about as close as we can get with this configuration. And the vector glyphs and the total pressure map is along the center line. As we move from mapping the region near the edge to the center, then to the other side, the flow structures change from mostly dominated by the side flows and then to the floor flow. Going by the shear stress lines on the rear, there is a large amount of lateral movement out from a stagnation point. With this diffuser angle marginal, there is a small characteristic sideways oscillation indicating flow separation. It is not caused by the lateral flow above, but it just doesn't help. This configuration produced the expected flow pattern and there is an increase in the rear downforce, a direct result of the diffuser lip working. However, there is no overall gain in the total downforce from this because it is countered by an increase in front lift. Again, the diffuser is behind the rear axle and there is front lift from this, but that doesn't explain it all. The difference in front lift is about 15 newtons, the amount added to the rear. Lastly, I tried to get some of this back with a splitter modification because all this was going in the wrong direction for a front wheel drive car. Adding a wing profile to the splitter to reduce its separation bubble caused by the adverse pressure gradient as the air moved around the sharp leading edge. This increased the total performance, but mostly from the mid and rear sections of the floor. So that's great. The front is now completely neutral and the rear produces a good amount of the CLA of negative 0.3. There isn't much difference in the wake structure. To wrap this up, the centerline plot illustrates the improvements. First the new baseline, then the added rear panel removing the blockage from the engine bay as the air now has a clean flow out to the back, indicated by the general lower line. Third, the diffuser aids a little more air extraction. Lastly, the splitter has a higher pressure, and it's the mid-floor working better. To get the front to work, it needs modifications that aren't directly connected to the rear. That is, the flow is directed out away from the rear flow field 